I recently picked up this nice older dressage saddle for a steal of a deal. It was $200. It has definitely seen some better days. There's a bunch of old sweat and dirt from being used over the years. It also has a bunch of mold growing underneath the flaps. So I am going to do a complete saddle restoration on this guy. There's a few different ways you can do this to a saddle, but I've done it a few ways and this is the best that works for me. I'm going to start by giving it a really deep clean. After that, I'm going to strip whatever finish is left on it. Then I'm going to go ahead and dye the whole thing black. After I'm done dyeing it, I'm going to condition it and seal it. You can see here that a lot of the color is fading from different parts of the saddle. Hopefully when I'm all done with this saddle, it will look closer to what it did when it was bought brand new. These saddles sell for 3,500 new, so it's worth the extra time and elbow grease to get it looking better again. It looks like this saddle has been in storage for quite some time and wasn't properly cleaned when it was put away. It didn't look too bad when I bought it, but upon closer inspection, there is a ton of sweat and dirt and horse hair caked in all of the little nooks and crannies. So that is going to take a lot of scrubbing to get out. While I don't like dropping a couple thousand dollars on a new saddle, I do like my horses to have nice things. I have high hopes that this saddle is going to look completely different once I'm done with it. The first step is washing the entire saddle. I'm going to use this glycerin soap. I have a new bar, but I also have a piece of an old bar, so this will be the perfect amount to get going on this saddle. And I'm just going to start by using a damp washcloth and getting a little bit of suds going. It took me around two and a half hours to get this saddle completely clean. I managed to edit it down to about a minute for you guys. When I was all done with the initial cleaning, I went in with a toothbrush. The sweat and dirt that builds up on the saddle can degrade the seam, so it's important to keep them really clean. I spruced up the hardware, cleaned out the logos, and got these stir up leather keepers squeaky clean. The underside of the saddle was pretty dirty and had a bit of mold growing. I let the soap sit on it to break up all of the gunk and continue the satisfying job of cleaning out all of the little nooks and crannies until eventually I could wipe out all of the gunk that had built up over the years. This was probably the most satisfying part. There was a ton of old horse hair and sweat stuck in the seams. There were a few parts of the saddle that had a lot of sweat build up on it like the bottoms of the flaps and the underside of the saddle. You can see here that it is hard and crusty and it looks like someone put the saddle on their horse with no pad underneath. I cleaned this side and the leather is nice and firm but over here it is really hard and crunchy. I had to let it soak for a while but it eventually came off and ended up looking pretty good. Here's what it looked like before and after it cleaned up really nicely. With the amount of dirt and sweat caked on there, I was surprised the leather bounced back so nice, but when we were done, we had a nice clean saddle. You can tell that there is a lot of the dye that has rubbed off over the years, but we are still going to need to deglaze the saddle or remove any finish that's left on it. You can buy a product specifically for this, but it's basically just acetone, so I bought a giant bottle of nail polish remover. This little guy was really interested in what I was doing. There wasn't a ton of finish left on the saddle because it was so old, but there was some coming off. This is what it looks like when you strip off the finish and the top layer of the dye. It looks pretty gnarly right now, but all of the dye that we removed while we were deglazing, we're gonna put back in in the next step. So the saddle has to get a little bit worse looking before it gets better. And I'm just using a small bottle of plain black dye. It is really satisfying putting this on. 
the leather was still a little bit wet from when I cleaned it and then deglazed it. I have found it doesn't make a huge difference whether or not you put the dye on when it's wet or dry. I ended up putting two coats on that evening and then the next morning when the saddle was dry, I put one more coat on. At this point, the saddle is having a hard time absorbing the dye. So that was my final coat. And then the next day I came out and the saddle is looking really, really good. I did end up dyeing the underside of the saddle. I just think it looks a lot nicer. Some people will put a sealant on at this point, but I like using this leather balm. It has some wax and some oil in it. I put two to three coats all over the saddle and when I was done pulling up most of the dye, I was ready for the next part. And this little guy came back to check on my work some more. At this point, the saddle looks pretty good. You could stop right here, but the dye is probably gonna eventually rub off and I don't want that. So I am gonna go ahead and put a protective coating on the saddle. I made sure to let the saddle dry and then rubbed off all of the excess oil until there was hardly any more dye coming off the saddle. It is looking really good right now. I was a little disappointed the underside of the saddle didn't get darker, but you really can't tell unless you get up super close and look at it. I took a short break for some cat snuggles, and then I went and I got this snow seal. This stuff is awesome at keeping leather protected from the elements. It has a lot more beeswax in it than the leather balm. My other cat, Pumpkin, came out to see what I was doing. I'm trying not to get distracted for too long because I am almost done with this saddle. For this last step, I'm gonna use some sheepskin that I'm gonna cut up into little squares. And I'm gonna slather this saddle with this wax until it won't absorb anymore. I like this stuff a lot better than some of the traditional sealers that you put on the saddle. I think it can make them really slippery and this stuff turns a little bit tacky once you're done. You could be finished here, but I am gonna give it a little bit of buff with this horsehair brush that I found at Goodwill. Then I'm gonna leave it out in the sun for a few hours just so that wax really seals in. Then it's time for the big reveal. I knew this saddle was gonna look much better once I was done with it, but it wasn't until I did this side by side that I realized how much it had changed since the beginning. For this project, the only thing I had to spend money on was the dye and the nail polish remover, so I ended up spending around $10 and a few hours, and this saddle is looking so much better. I love finding bargains on older, well-made tack. And if this saddle doesn't end up fitting the horse that I bought it for, I'll be able to sell it and make some money and hopefully invest in another one. I hope you found this restoration as satisfying as I did. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.